What's up guys, Chip here with Main Street Mower. Comparing some big heavy hitter blowers this morning. Come on, at Main Street Mower, we have all the biggest, baddest, heaviest duty blowers here. And we've been testing them on things like fuel efficiency, weight, thrust, right? All kinds of stuff. So if you wanna learn more about the power and efficiency of these units, check out our other video, it's gonna be right up here. Um, it's gonna have all the details about which blower is strongest, which blower is most efficient, which blower is lightest, all those things. But this video is kind of like the touch and feels, like the livability, right? Like what is it like to live with these units? What are my thoughts and feelings just on the way they're built, the constructed, and we're gonna talk about it, right? There's, there's, they're very different machines uh, and some of them are very similar. I don't know if you can see these two, we'll just start off like this. These are basically, identical. This is a Husqvarna 580 BTS and this is the Red Max EBZ 8560. They literally have the exact same engine, same carburetor, pretty much the exact same thing other than the plastics, right? That man's an imposter. That man is the imposter. They look like a giant weed eater engine kind of strapped on the back of a blower housing. We did a lot of tests and they did great in the in the strength. They're very powerful machines. Just some of the points I'll point off right away is like it's kind of interesting how this carburetor is all exposed. You have your fuel lines right here exposed. Your gas tank grommet is right here. I kind of like how easy it is to access all these things. It is kind of hanging out. It does kind of look maybe a little cheaper, but it's also pretty user friendly. This is your choke knob. It is manual. You know, it's not attached to your trigger or anything like that. So when you choke it, you need to be off the unit, crank it, be mindful of this flip it off with your finger, but it is easy to access. All the kind of connection points on these hoses are all made with traditional automotive hose clamps. So you have the little flat head style. Oh, actually they made them with their little T27 uh, starboard, which is nice. So you can use that on all of them, but that's pretty much used throughout. Even on the hose clamps on the tubes, you can see same metal hose clamp, same metal hose clamp. And then it has some little wire jobs to hold your whole throttle cable in place. You know, to me, this kind of seems like a cheap afterthought, uh, and it's kind of sharp, you know, on your elbows, and does it work? I'm sure it works. Do they break? Probably not. They probably hold up really well, but they do seem a little bit painful to use, right? We'll move on to the back plate. I think this is an important piece of any blower, because this is where your body makes contact with your blower, right? This back plate has this molded foam, and this is kind of like the foam you see in modern football helmets. Very high density, small, like small pore foam. And they have a nice back plate. It has a decent feel when you're wearing it. And the shoulder straps are pretty nice as well. I just don't know how this foam holds up over time, right? Like this foam might slowly start to remove its outer skin or the outer skin might wear off. I don't know if you guys own one of these and you've owned it for a while. I'll be curious just to hear in the comments how these foam pads have held up over time and what is it like owning one for a while. I don't imagine you can remove it uh, without ripping it. So it's one of those things where it might be comfortable for you know six months to a year and then once it starts to get ripped, it might fill with water or something like that. But really, I don't know. And it's not like the cloth ones don't fill with water. They're just as absorbent. So it might do a better job of resisting water. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think about that. I haven't lived with one of these back plates. Let us know in the comments which one you prefer. Uh, if you've owned one of these and maybe like a V R 600 who has the cloth style. One thing I could tell is like some things just seem a little bit flimsy on it, right? Like this seems like a strawberry basket you'd get from the grocery store and have all your strawberries in. It just seems a little flimsy and kind of cheap, right? It kind of brings me to my next question. Like these units are so similar. They literally have the exact same muffler, exact same carburetor, the exact same air filter, exact same horn. Like who's making this? I, that's just a great question. Like Husqvarna's not making it or is Red Max making it or some third party making it? I've seen a lot of like knockoff versions of this and they look very, very similar, just different branding. But I, I know that these are good units. I know that people have been using them and people really enjoy them and they've been holding up well. And they performed really well in all of our performance tests. So it's not like it is poorly made or it doesn't last a long time because I'm sure you guys have used them and you like them. But it's just interesting to note, you know, who's making them. And the other thing is maybe there's a great Red Max dealer in your town. Obviously, I'd go with the Red Max if this is what you're thinking. Or maybe there's a great Husqvarna dealer in town, go with the Husqvarna. I don't know if all the parts would switch over. You could probably switch some of the things over, most of the things over. Some of the other basic stuff you won't be able to swap. They did change a lot of the plastic equip. Like the air filter housing on this has these clamps ooh, on all four. And then your air filter can come out. That's how Husqvarna chose to do it on theirs. On the other one, it's wing nuts. Same air filter, um, but different housing, right? And I don't think, nope, you couldn't put this one 
on here because there's no screw holes. So not like you could switch between them as far as just swapping parts, but maybe some more essential parts like a, the motor or the carburetor you could. Ooh. Those clamps have a really positive clamping. They seem fragile, but they feel like they hold it on there really nice, which is, I like that. That's not coming off. Let's talk about thickness. If you have a backpack on, say you're going hiking in the mountains, right? You have a backpack on, say 40 pounds, or let's just say 20 pounds, and it's really nice and close to your back. It's a lot easier to twist and turn and to move. You're a lot more agile, but if you have a 20 pound pack and it sticks out really far, you know, like those middle school kids who just have every book in their locker and they're like, I will never go to my locker. Is there any way, maybe, do you think you'd want to get into my backpack? <laughs> and it sticks out really far, then even if it weighs the same weight as a 20 pound pack, the center of gravity is a little different. The way it rotates is a little different. It's comfortability and it's just usability is a little different. And this thing got some back. I don't know if you see that, but it's definitely some donk donk. Yes, my body is redunkadunculous. You know, that's a big deal. You're moving around, you're carrying it, you're getting in and out of your trailer, you're walking through bushes and doing all kinds of stuff. How big this assembly is, how far it hangs back, is an important part of that combination. Even if it is lighter than other ones, if it sticks out really far, it could be less fun or less comfortable to use. The reason I keep using this Red Max as an example because they are the exact same. I'm gonna try this one on and see how it feels real quick. So it's always important to get your straps all adjusted properly. I'm a big guy, but this is as far as these straps go. And I'm not sure if you are a really big guy, these straps might not be big enough for you. There's no kind of center strap or anything like that. How this dangles. I'm just giving it a feel, y'all. Could I live with this thing? I feel like an early Apollo mission. It does kind of fall pretty naturally for my size. Like I said, I'm 5'11", so you can adjust it for your arm length, but it's set pretty nice for mine. The trigger feels fine, on off. It does have a lock throttle, which is nice. Has a kill switch at your hand. The cushions like, are meeting on the outside of my spine. They're kind of on the outside of my back. My spine has room. It's not getting pressed at all, so there's no like, bone pressure there, which is nice. Like You don't want your spine of your back hitting the plastic, right? So there's some nice support that my spine isn't hitting the plastic at all. I think it feels pretty good, actually. I don't mind it. The shoulder straps are a little smaller than I'd want, and they're a little bit wider. I don't know if the other ones will be different. See, there's not much cushion up here. And when I probably ring my arms up, I'm hitting the strap, right? My, the strap is hitting my pit, kind of. One thing I will say is that these are heavy, without a doubt. And the handle is kind of encumbered by this air filter up top. Like, I don't like that the air filter is the highest point of this thing. I imagine this gets broken a lot. Like, considering how many handles I've seen broken just on blowers in general, like, this being the highest point is going to be your first point of contact. Like, your guys are kind of lazy and they throw stuff. That's going to get beat up a lot and probably broken a ton. If you break off these tabs on your fan housing, that is like an expensive repair. Like, that's nearly totaled. It's kind of an interesting point. Like, this is a vulnerability and these parts are pretty vulnerable. Also, if like your guys are throwing it around, like, there's not much protecting your carburetor where it's mounted and it goes straight into your intake block and all that like that could easily all be very easily damaged like if any of this gets hit that seems a little bit risky to me compared to some of the other brands like the steel has a little more protection and a little better like shrouding i'd say for sure i do like the transparent tank i know my fuel level very easily and i do appreciate that about it and it's a very big tank which is cool i don't know exactly the size but you can just tell it's pretty pretty large This is the Husqvarna 580 BTS, and it's a Mark III. This is extremely similar to the Red Max. Uh, same engine, same carburetor, same style fuel tank, same air filter, a lot of very, very similar things, same feel. Husqvarna did make it their own. They put their own plastics on it. They put their own clamping system on the air filter. They put their own backplate on it. Husqvarna went with a center foam piece, leaving the lats exposed. They do have the nice waist buckle. We're gonna try that out and see how that feels. And then they have their Husqvarna shoulder straps. And those shoulder straps are attached to your belt. Rather than being attached to the base, they're attached to your belt. The reason I'm not really going into detail on the backside of the Husqvarna is it's the exact same thing as the, the backside of the Red Max. So the only real difference you're gonna see is in the straps and how they're mounted up to you and maybe the handle construction and the tube and how that swings. And we're gonna try it on and see how they feel and how the tube feels and all that stuff. Very similar fit and finish. They also use the automotive hose clamps. That just kind of is what it is on those units. Let's try it on. Get this thing all dialed in here. 
I do like these little thumb pulls. It's nice. Ah! Once you're in it, you're in it. It takes a minute to get there, right? It does feel really well secured. It does feel like it's moving with me well. I really do always appreciate when they have the belly strap, even though you got a belly like mine, quite the belly strap. Especially when you have a blower that's putting twisting force on your body. I appreciate this side thing. A more advanced model of the steel does offer that as well. But on this one, it comes with it, which is cool. It does have the same on-off switch, same trigger as the Red Max. As far as the tube feels, it has a good sweeping pattern. This one and the Red Max both felt nice, better than the Echo. The Echo was the most stiff. As far as shifting this or sliding this forward, it has a little wing nut here, which you can adjust. This piece slides. You know, there is definitely just something about this unit that feels a little cheap. Like that way, this is all constructed, but this just does not feel robust enough for landscape duty. Like this little point of contact here, like this thing is gonna snap, I'm sure of it. Comment in the below, have you ever broken your handle on this? It seems like it has a weak point. But as far as the sweep, the way it feels, feels good. I like the strap. If I had to pick between this one and the Red Max, obviously I'd first go with whatever dealer was best to me, but I probably would go with the Husqvarna just because I like this strap system a little better. The one thing I wish these side things were a little longer, you know, they're kind of back there. I know I got a big belly, but the strap is not as comfortable as the pads, but it's not bad. I don't mind it. I don't, it's kind of annoying that that's in your way, actually. You kind of have to use it. I think I'd probably go with this one over the Red Max if I had to pick between these two. You know what I'm saying? Okay, we're going to move on to the Echo. Okay, here is the PB9010T. The biggest, baddest echo they make right now. Guys, when you crank this thing up, it absolutely does sound like, almost like a Harley. Like it is heavy duty. The engine sounds really beefy, really heavy duty. The atomic leaf blowerinator. And you could tell this thing has mad power. If you could tell in our other videos, we had a test where we put a, an electric scale on the ground and we aimed the tube right at it at a fixed height of like one foot. And this thing blew almost 10 pounds of pressure more than the other blowers. If you want to learn more about that, like I said, go back to the review of all the strengths. It's going to be right over here. Check it out. It's going to show you all the different strength tests that this thing won. But let's talk about the livability of this unit for a minute. It is very similar to the Red Max and to the Husqvarna. It has a carburetor on the outside. You have your outside fuel grommet. Your fuel tank's all accessible and transparent. It looks very similar to these, and that's just an interesting point to make. You could tell when you look at the actual engine block, it is a different engine and it has a different muffler, so it must be powered by something different. The shroud is different, the plastics are different. The air filter is very similar. I don't know if it's the exact same or not. Ooh, they're not the same. The air filter is bigger on the Echo and it is thicker. I don't know if you can see that, but it is thicker. So that's more element, more airflow. It's not that necessarily means more power or anything, even though it does have more power. It's just an interesting observation. So it's not the exact same. Very similar style though. They've kind of gone a similar path. It also has the same high air filter strategy and it is the highest point on this blower. So if you had a large impact, say you dropped it or threw something on top of it, this air filter thus and your fan housing is gonna take a beating. So that's just something to keep in mind. Spark plug seems pretty accessible. All your fuel lines, very accessible. They put a nice little, I don't know if that's a friction guard or a heat shield. Some got a little shield on their fuel line, which looks nice. They had their tank vent sticking on top. Their choke, you could flip it with your finger here. Will it come off with the throttle? Oh, it does, they're linked, okay? That's nice. The Red Max does not do that. When you squeeze your throttle on the other brands, the choke normally comes off. On this one, it is fully manual, the choke. And that's just an ease of living thing, right? Quickly grab your throttle and it's working again. You don't have to kind of fumble around and try to hit this little tiny switch. And it does kind of have a nice little feel to it. Not 100% sure how that works, but I like how it works. It's not bad. Approved. You know, I had a lot of people like, give me the biggest, most powerful blower you got. You don't always need the most powerful blowers, what I've learned. 
This is a great unit. If you're doing parking lots in like large areas, heavy leaf fall, Virginia houses and the Carolinas and all that stuff, and they have their fall and all the leaves come and you guys gotta push all these leaves into a giant pile, it makes sense to have a really, really powerful blower. But if you're a you know, a guy just doing these small residences in the south, not a ton of leaf fall like that, you're doing grass clippings and things like, a blower like this is gonna be throwing stuff out of your flower beds and moving mulch and might cause you more cleanup than good. But like I said, if you have the big leaf litter, you got the big heavy duty jobs and you're okay with a little bit of back pain because you need to get the job done quickly, then you might need to step it up to one of these big blowers. That's kind of, you know, what this category is, the big heavy duty blowers. But you don't always have to step up to this size blower if you're just doing lawns. If you're just so a regular landscaper, 40, 50 lawns a week, 100 yards a week, maybe like big HOAs, houses after houses with just small driveways and things like that. Like this thing would be a pain in the butt to take on and off 100 times. It's just bigger, it's less easy to carry. Definitely not as fun to move around or to put on your blower rack, right? And that's a whole nother point, like getting your hand around this on this handle and blower racks is just slightly more difficult, I think, with this style than with this style. This handle is very accessible on the 800 versus this handle is kind of hidden. This is your highest point of contact versus this being your highest point of contact. Okay, move it around and check out front operating platform here where you make contact with the machine. The harness is attached to your back plate, which is traditional. It's attached pretty high up here on your handle. So it is one other thing kind of maybe in the way of your handle. It has that same football helmet style foam but something they did that I actually really appreciated, and I don't know why other people don't do it, they put these vents, and this is actually where the machine is drawing air from, and so it creates almost kind of like an air conditioning as you're wearing this blower, which kind of genius. I don't know if you guys remember the old uh, steel BR420s. They used to have a vent at the bottom and it was notorious for sucking your t-shirt in and ripping the back of your t-shirt off. And you'd see every guy who had a BR420, their shirt would be like cut like this. This one, I don't know if it'll do that or not. Maybe if you had a frayed shirt or if you're wearing some tassels or what is that called when you wear the leather vest with all the little frills, frillies. Whatever, dude, whatever. Peace, God bless. Might not be safe to wear, might suck you in, but if you're wearing a normal t-shirt, it actually feels pretty nice. It also does have some cheap feeling plastic like that strawberry basket feel on the sides. Just generally kind of has a slightly less polished fit and finish than the steel blower. It has the automotive style hose clamps, and they're not with the star wrench. They are with a flathead, which I absolutely hate. Hopefully you're not taking them off a lot because that would just make you very, very mad. It has an enormous hole. If you look down that hole, <laughs> this thing is massive. It has a very big air channel. You could tell it's a very, very wide berth. It actually did not help it in the one of the tests. We did a test with batteries. We were blowing up across this terrazzo floor. And because this thing has such a wide blow pattern, it did not do a good job of blowing the battery across the floor. And it's just an interesting point, but it does blow a lot of air. Obviously, it does a great job with leaves and that sort of thing. It is not channeling that air into a smaller pattern. If this is like a shotgun, this is a short barrel, right? <laughs> Rather than like a rifle or a long barrel shotgun. Uh, I'm gonna try it on and see how it feels, see how these straps work. They do have nice foam straps here. They do feel pretty well built. I'm gonna get in this thing. Anytime I put on a blower, I like to loosen the straps up a lot, give me a lot of room to get in there. Has a couple different ways to adjust it. You can adjust the length, and then you can adjust the width up here behind your neck, which is kind of interesting. Once I get it on, then I like to tighten everything up. This is just for the initial fit. You know, obviously once you've been blowing with your machine for a while. Just initial reaction, the more comfortable strap situation than the Red Max. But that top back strap, I like that you can adjust how wide the straps are in the back. I thought that was gonna feel weird on your neck or something, but I don't notice it at all. And it definitely helps keep the weight more towards the inside rather than on the outside feeling like it's gonna fall off. Because there's no kind of clip or clamp, it does feel like my weight is all on my shoulders here. It's not really distributed anywhere on my body, but the straps are comfortable and the strap comes down a lot further. If you look at the foam on this strap, it comes all the way down past my arm pretty low compared to the Red Max where the strap was ending all the way up here. And I was starting to get kind of some wear from this strap. It was starting to cut into my shoulders a little bit there. This one feels better. If you're a bigger guy, this is definitely a better strap for bigger people. And there's a lot of slack. Like I can make this thing way bigger. Like. I'm not anywhere close to the how big it can get. It can get all the way there, right? And 
pretty easy to strap up. As far as tube feel, it's one thing when they're not on, it's another thing when they are on. But as far as not on, it has a nice natural feel to it. My hand naturally goes to it. It doesn't want to open up really wide. I don't know if it's just the length of the tube, but if I had to blow over there, I'm definitely going to have to rotate my body. It doesn't have quite as easy of a swing. I think part of that is the stiffness of this accordion elbow here. It's a little stiff, so when I want to turn, I kind of feel like it's not wanting me to turn naturally with my wrist. It feels like there's a little more labor involved there. Also, this handle, I mean, I'm not like going nuts on it. I imagine this is a weak point, like especially with how strong this is and how like hard it is to turn it. And anytime you see these little plastic teeth like that, that's usually a bad sign. Just like that is going to wear out and get jacked up probably pretty quickly, if I had to guess. But I do not like the way this tube feels. It's not wanting to play very nice. I feel very robotic when I use it. But the back plate is nice, the air conditioning is nice, the straps are nice. But geez, it is heavy. Like, you can tell you're wearing something. That is definitely not a light blower. I'm glad they at least made the straps really comfortable because this is the kind of blower you are wearing for a long period of time. And the strap and back plate, they did think that through very well. The PB9010T is a pretty nice blower. I like the way the back plate feels. If you do really big yards and you need a lot of power, I think the PB9010T is a viable option. Just make sure you do have a good dealer near you. You know, that's the key to any purchase, anything you're gonna be putting on your equipment trailer, on your truck, in your business, just make sure you have good service options. You don't wanna be buying products that don't have support because as we know, landscapers, it's a rough job. You break stuff a lot and you're gonna need somebody who's gonna be able to get you parts and put them on for you because you're gonna to be too busy making that money. And this blower seems pretty nice and it's pretty powerful. Moving on to the steel BR800X. I'm gonna pull it around here so I have a little more ability to look at it. Next up is the BR800X, and this is a sweet little blower. There is a, another model with the side rewind and a little bit more extensive backplate option. This is the slightly simplified version with the traditional rewind in the rear and a slightly smaller backplate. This BR800 has been around for a few years now and is an extremely powerful unit, but out of the three, it has the lowest power rating comparatively, but in the test, did actually really, really well. For instance, in the battery push test, where he pushed the battery across the floor, it did one of the best, if not the best, out of all the four. And I think part of that is maybe due to the tube, the nozzle on this tube does a better job of maybe directing that air and putting it where you need it. This blower is the lightest as well, so it's one of those things where you trade off a little bit for something else, right? Maybe it's slightly less powerful, but it's a little more comfortable or a little lighter to use. You know, as you know with all steel products, they're very fit and finish. All of their pieces here are completely sealed. Nothing's gonna touch your hoses or your carburetor. Everything is protected by their exterior shrouds. You know, some people might not like that because it takes a couple extra screws to get inside of there, and it's a little bit more compact once you get in there, but it is really nice for just protecting this thing. You know, it basically comes with its own cover, right? Like it's not, your fuel lines aren't getting baked in the sun sitting on your trailer all day or in the weather. It basically has its own little house that it lives inside and it's really well protected. And especially with crews, as we know, who are so rough on their units, this is a nice machine as far as protecting. I can just tell right away that this is a well-protected machine. Something we never, we didn't talk about with the other units is the anti-vibration. This one has rubber bushings. This one has some springs. This one has rubber bushings. This one has rubber springs and bushings and does a really good job with the anti-vibration. It's just as far as wearing this, when we were testing, you could tell this thing feels really nice. You know, there's a test called the Rolls-Royce test. When you crank a Rolls-Royce engine, you put a quarter on top of the engine block. If the quarter of the coin won't fall over, right? And when it's idling, it won't fall over. And that's like Rolls-Royce's point, like, hey, this is a really premium engine. It's really well balanced, but the steel feels, feels very similar to that. Just as that, it's very well sorted. It's very balanced, it doesn't vibrate, doesn't affect your back very much. It doesn't make you very itchy. It's a very comfortable, user-friendly platform, but it is less powerful. And that is, you know, maybe one downside to that. Engine, muffler, carburetor, all look very different than the other three. You know, steel makes this blower in Virginia Beach, Virginia. It's an American-made blower, and that's pretty cool too. Steel only sells through privately owned businesses. The only exception to that is Northern Tool and Ace Hardware. You know, you can buy this Echo PB9010 at Walmart on walmart.com. You can't buy the steel 
at Walmart. I know that might be less convenient for some people, but it is really great for the dealerships and you're gonna have better dealers when you have a brand that wants to support dealerships that way and protect us as a dealer. All the prices are set by steel dealers, so pretty much any steel dealership you walk into, it's gonna have the same price. Uh, that's probably the same across the board. Other just fit and finish things, the handle. Look at this handle. Look how obstruction free, easy to grab, right up top this handle is. You know, I was talking about this air filter being attached to your housing that could maybe be vulnerable for your air filter and your housing. And this handle is attached to your housing as well. So maybe if you had an impact, you could affect your blower housing. In all the years that I've been running a service shop, I haven't seen that happen. I have seen maybe a broken handle, especially on some of the uh, other models, but I haven't seen very many. This is a very strong plastic. It's more robust, it's not very hollow. It has all kinds of structure inside of here, which makes this handle very strong but it is a lot easier to grab. You can grab this blower and move it around very easily on and off the truck and trailer and it's not a big floppy mess. They also include this really wonderful clip here. This clip is how you store your tube up, right? All the other blowers are kind of like this big floppy thing that you have to either put on a rack or throw in the back of your truck and you're gonna get your tubes crushed and everything destroyed. But steel, I think they should put this on all their blowers. They knocked it out of the park. They put this delightful little clasp here you just pull it down and it stays right there. And this is really heavy duty. This screw goes through this clasp and it's stainless steel and it holds up really well. And it keeps your tube out of the way, keeps everything nice and sorted, it's nice and compact. It's just a delightful little experience how that all works. Pretty much everything you want to take are going to take off of a steel unit is with a tool. So you do have to use your scrunch to remove your air filter and that's just a part of the deal. That's part of their housing. And yeah, it's a little less convenient, but you don't change your air filter that often. And steel goes with a much different style air filter, a much thicker, taller. I don't know the exact volume difference. When you go up, it changes things. But this is what their air filter looks like. And inside their housing comes right off of their carburetor, fits in there like that. And everything is nice and compact and tidy. They also have a slot for winter mode. If you are in a very cold climate, say up north Canada in the winter, you know, anywhere like that, it redirects your air around your engine so that it warms it, it preheats it before it makes it into your engine, keeps better running, doesn't run as rich or anything like that, it helps better performance. And that's something I didn't see on any other brand. Steel also offers that on their chainsaws. The screws are captured, so you don't have to, you don't have to worry about those falling out on you. They're stuck inside that little cover there. It is easy to do. It doesn't bother me that there's not a wing nut here. Even their spark plug is underneath this little cover. Everything's kind of just sealed and concealed. As far as side plates, you know, we talked about the plastic on all the other ones kind of being like a strawberry basket. This has a very rigid plastic, very strong plastic guard here. It just feels very nice. The fit and finish is very tidy. I don't know, it doesn't make any sounds. It, it's all clipped into place nicely. The straps has a lower back cushion, which I like, kind of keeps the weight distributed a little bit better. You know, some of the other op models don't have like a big pad here. If you look at them, it's kind of like flat on some of the other models. This one kind of created a little bit of pad, creates a space for your spine, and here are your cushions. Straps, these do get wet. You know, like that's one downside that these sit on your trailer, it's getting rained on. This all does get kind of wet. They do have that captured loop like the Echo, which I think is a great deal. You don't want those loops just flying around crazy. And so they have a captured loop, tighten it very easily. Let me put this thing on, see how it hangs. This is how you adjust the handle on here. You can adjust it with this clamp. All of Steel's straps are molded plastic with a set screw rather than those automotive hose clamps. Their hoses run through a clamp with a plastic piece here, keep everything moving nicely. The tube feels higher, like it's higher on the body. The handle's very comfortable, it does have cruise control, has your on position. Something Steel does on their more premium products is they, they make their off switch return. So that way your machine is always in the on position. That way when you grab it and go pulling on the rope, it's ready to go. So when you turn this off, you have to hold it down. And when you let go of it, it springs up to the I position. That's the on position, right? Something that these three models don't do is that. And that might seem like a small difference, but if you have a new guy who's not very good at starting these units uh, and you have say this Husqvarna or this Red Max, they have to use the choke manually and their on off can be set in the off position and stay on the off position. But the steel, they put a lot of thought in those little things like that, right? It's always in the on position, I appreciate that. Uh, as far as the tube goes and how it swings left to right, this tube swings very nicely left to right. This accordion has the right amount of tension and the placement of this tube is very easy. As far as the straps where they fall, they fall very comfortably. They're a lot like the Echo. 
they do come down past. They come down further than the other two, and they have a good bit of slack. Like if I needed this to be bigger, it can get a lot bigger if you were a bigger operator. They do even have a more premium 800 than this, but it just kind of has some like nicer frills. It's the same engine, same power, that has a side start and it has a taller back plate, and it has the buckle in the front, which is a nice feature. The Husqvarna also does offer that front buckle, and that does help with the distrib distribution of weight, and this some kind of controllability of the whole situation. This unit is, like I said, the no frills model of the 800 and does not have that, but at the same time, has all the power, the lightness, has that really nice tube feel. That is a very nice sweep on that tube probably the best feel of all of them for sure. Guys, that concludes our review of these four powerhouses. All four of are totally viable options. I, we always recommend go with what your dealership carries, get the best product you can afford because you don't wanna have to buy stuff twice, right? You don't wanna buy a cheap product online, has no service or support, and then you're stuck with it forever. It breaks, you just might as well throw it away. Make sure you go to a dealer in your town that is reputable, that has good quality brand, and they stock parts. Make sure they have a technician there who likes the product and is good at repairing the product. If you're in Central Florida or a steel dealer, Main Street Mower, we sell steel products. I believe in them. We stock parts for them. We take good care of them. I have gold mechanics working for me and then we do a great job of taking care of these machines. But if you don't live in Orlando and you have a great Echo dealer in town and you do a lot of big leaves, this is a nice machine. I've been impressed by it so far. Same with the Husqvarna. You know, they all blow air. Some do it with a little more style. Some do it with a little more class. All in all, I've been pretty impressed with all four of these machines. Thanks for checking us out. Subscribe. Come on. See ya. Peace.